been seeing a lot of articles across the globe. But I would like to enhance upon certain statistics of, of what exactly are we living in the current context. So going and moving forward, uh, if you see, uh, these are all the topics that I'm going to cover, the existing statistics, which we all know, because you know, we keep an eye on what's happening in and around. And then I'll be talking about air pollution specifically, uh, because this is a vast topic and it can go for hours if I start speaking about various types of pollution. And then I'll, I'll highlight on uh, solid waste and biomedical waste, because recently I have been attending some of the national webinars organized by Ministry of uh, uh, environment and Central Pollution Control Board, uh, IAS officers. So I was a part of uh, one of the webinar where I am attending and I'll share the insights of what I have heard from them. Uh, so to start with, we all know that this is where we are standing. So the current graphs and images highlight uh, the recent statistics still uh, last night. Uh, I haven't updated uh, today's morning part of it. Uh, but so now uh, if you are trying to look into the aspect of the coronavirus and it's spread across the various parts of the country. You can see this here. Um, it's huge. Maharashtra being the uh, Maharashtra being one of the most uh, affected part in the entire country and uh, followed by various states of the country. And you can see it's a pandemic. We all started with you know thousands, hundreds, and then it extended to uh, further aspects of uh, increase in the spread of the coronavirus. There are a lot of factors involved or associated with this. One important point I wanted to highlight in this regard is that the pollution, uh, whatever the pollution that we undergo in our daily life, also plays a crucial role uh, to some extent. As per the article written uh, by University of Illinois, Illinois uh, USA, that it has an impact towards the spread of corona, not fastly but at a very slow pace uh, if, if the atmosphere is polluted. I'll talk about it a bit later. And then uh, going ahead, uh, before talking about climate change or environment and all, it is my responsibility to highlight the sustainable development goals that were formulated by United Nations for the entire uh, globe, uh, for the entire world. So there are 17 sustainable goals as decided and framed by United Nations for, for the betterment of the society across the globe. So it includes India also. So here I'll be mostly concentrating on uh, certain aspects of uh, the climate conditions. Uh, so if you can see here, the climate conditions, uh, the clean water and sanitation, as well as the climate action. So the 13th point and sixth point are more closely related to each other. At the same time, it is also linked to 9 and 11 also. So the industry, innovation and infrastructure, sustainable cities and communities. So 6, 9, 11 and 13 to some extent are closely associated to each other. I mean, I would rather say uh, being a civil engineer, I could I could link them. Uh, so there are there are a huge amount of information available online. If you go to United, United Nations to see how the globe is planning to address all these issues. Having said that, so let us come to the climate change part. So most of the information that I'm going to present are taken from World Health Organization, World Bank, Asian Development Bank, United Nations and biodiversity and different uh, boards of pollution from the states and the country. So this is what we are in right now. Now, how does this you know, climate change affect the cities? Uh, if you try to look into it. So various factors have been highlighted starting from displacement, infrastructure, health, food and water security, economic development, ecosystem, and the social beneficial aspects of the society. So now if you see, uh, if there is a huge impact on um, the this climate change in a given place, it's very difficult for an individual to stay or for a family to stay for a longer time. And we all know the atomic bomb in Japan, Nagasaki and Hiroshima. It took years of time to, 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 to just vacate that place or to control the situation. Even now, uh, those past things can be experienced. So there's no other option apart from uh, displacing from the original place. That's what displacement is meant for. And then we have infrastructure. So currently from here, I'll try to talk about various things which is related to COVID-19. The current slides, I'll also show you the current statistics also. So if you see the almost the infrastructural growth in the country had 
almost been reduced by an amount of uh, around 10 to 15 percent. Uh, I think uh, Mr. Serad also in his previous presentation, I think the couple of presentations before was talking about the infrastructural uh, infrastructure and its impact because of uh, the COVID-19. So coming to health, this is a crucial phenomenon right now. Every individual should stay safe, stay home and uh, and should be very careful with respect to whom they are coming in contact with, with respect to their daily routines or with respect to the groceries they buy. So we often see quite a lot of news in and around that, you know, there is a lot of uh, uh, fluctuations in uh, the numbers of, of COVID-19 patients across the nation. So we, are, we all should be very careful. And you, now you might have all seen the climate change because of this coronavirus. So a lot of pollution you might have seen reduced because of transportation industry is not functioning right now. Uh, factories have been shut down. The waste generated from the factories have drastically come down. And I'll show you some interesting facts where even I was amazed after looking into it that where India is standing right now. And then we come to food and water security. So this is one of the very important because without these two things, it's very difficult for all of us to survive. So, you know, on, on the other way around, most of us are habituated to at least, you know, uh, eat the foods or get the food ordered online at least once or twice a week, you know, to be free from our regular routine uh, fooding stuff. So now those things have stopped uh, in most of the places in the country. And water security, it's very, very important. The, the amount of the quality of water that we drink on a daily basis, uh, improvement in the quality. So all those stuff plays a very important role uh, in the change in the climatic conditions. Currently, you can see there are a lot of videos online spread around, uh, linking to China, our river Ganges. And uh, most of the rivers in India also have been lakes, they are all purified and the, the fishes inside the water can be clearly seen after a long time. So, again, this is because of the current situation. Yeah, it's an awkward situation for all of us, but to the nature and, and the Mother Earth, uh, to some extent, it's serving. Economic development. Uh, yeah, so this is something which is a very important phenomena. Uh, a lot of speakers before me have spoken about um, the economic development, how it, it's, it's going to face an issue, what's the crisis. And all, but having said that, one of the most important thing I wanted to highlight here is we can be happy. So before, the, I would rather say, before COVID nineteen or pre COVID nineteen scenario, we all might be, you know, sitting fingers crossed, thinking that oh, when will be the day that the climate change uh, would increase our economic economy to the maximum extent because of pollution, a lot of things are stopped and all. But ideally speaking, it's very tough. You know, the scenario right now is that a lot of industries and factories have stopped functioning and the, the traffic on the roads have been reduced. So the waste has been reduced, but it is showing its inverse uh, or, or direct effort to the economy drop down. Despite, you know, we feeling happy that the climatic conditions change has reduced, uh, but it's, it's, it's like a, a challenging thing for all of us. Uh, to ensure that the economy drop down uh, will increase. And I, I was I was just hearing to some of the lectures uh, or the webinars in the recent past from, again, uh, some government and academicians that uh, they were trying to say it takes at least two more years for our economy um, uh, to, to be online, provided uh, we work around 60 to 70 hours a day, uh, so uh, a week, sorry. So... Considering all these factors, it's like a blessing in disguise and we have to question ourselves, uh, is it a boon or not for us? The current climate conditions coming to normal scenario, it, it's definitely not a positive sign because our economy is completely coming down. As I said, ecosystem is one more part and the social movement also has been completely restricted in the current scenario. So I have taken one uh, Reference from Center for Biodiversity, I would just highlight upon uh, two, three, couple of things here. See, if at all, if these things of greenhouse gas emissions kept, keep on increasing for a quite an amount of time, by 2050, they, we are going to face an extinction and up to 70% by the end of century. Uh, that's such a, a huge statement given by Center for Biodiversity. So this loss is definitely reversible and it, it, will, def, it will completely disrupt the ecosystem, 
and it will it will be a complete difficult situation for all the society in the world societies in the world that that's something which is uh, interesting here this is what i will uh, try to talk about here um uh, the air quality you know that's what i said i will be mostly highlighting on air uh, pollution there are certain terms that we need to understand before going into air quality we have pm 2.5 pm 10 that pm corresponds to particulate matter so if the particulate matter in on, on the surface of the atmosphere or on the top of atmosphere if it is less than 2.5 micron uh, so that is considered to be pm 2.5 and if, and if it is less than 10 micron it is pm 10 Uh, you can imagine a case where we are using a fine beach sand then the particle size is 90 micron and if you have a human hair the particle size is again 50 to 70 micron so now we are talking about pm 2.5 and pm uh, 10 see here on 7 million people die every year from the exposure of these fine particles uh, because of the pollution and not due to various reasons of lungs cardiovascular systems lot of diseases you know asthma respiratory problems and all but more than 90% of air pollution related to death occur in low and middle income countries so low and middle income countries like especially uh, highlighted by world health organization that asia and africa and followed by uh, the eastern mediterranean region of europe and the americas at the last so you can see here how asia and africa are leading to lot of you know air pollution on an yearly basis as well as daily basis also so uh these are the deaths that i'm trying to highlight actually per this is as per 2016 uh, statistics that afghanistan stands top about 406 people try are dying uh, per 100000 and india stands third with 195 people and remember this is exclusively because of air pollution now having said that i just wanted to highlight certain images that i grabbed from google map and various other sources that how exactly various parts of india stand today in terms of a reduced pollution content you can see here um this is delhi one of the famous place kanat place uh, uh you can see the traffic here uh, completely scattered in orange red and dark red so this is before lockdown you can immediately see after lockdown the amount of drastic change that is observed in one of the most busiest places in the country uh, kanat place you can see almost all green lines uh, so this is one impact and then immediately we go to uh, delhi noida direct route uh, it's, it's a fast lane and then see here you can see a complete dark red line where the traffic is always uh, flowing continuously but now we can hardly see a traffic uh, is, is is this permanent definitely not and we don't want it to be also there are other ways to to come across i'll be talking it uh, about it at the end of my presentation of various uh, tools to be used to reduce this and then we have mumbai uh, this is near uh, iit bombay which is one of the most busiest places again the similar uh, comparison can be made and then we have uh, bangalore uh, before and after you can see bangalore is one of the most busiest cities in the country wherein you know you have traffic lights at every each and every junction um, within a short span of distance but now you can hardly see any traffic on the right hand side that most of these things have been reduced and then uh, so this is something i wanted to highlight because i come from hyderabad so i wanted to show cars you know uh, what exactly is the current condition of hyderabad um, during the lockdown period but still i wanted to highlight one point that the air quality index has not been reduced i i show that you can see here the entire outside circle is the outer ring road uh, and you can see the image that absolutely almost all the roads are completely green in color uh, the center the outer post outer portion is completely the outer ring road but this is what i wanted to highlight the pollution board in telangana has stated that uh, despite being in lockdown condition the the quality index of air or the amount of air pollution was not reduced to a maximum extent the same thing was represented in the image also here the graph that i have put uh, you can see uh, comparatively delhi and hyderabad uh being most busiest cities uh you can see from the march 21st to april 2nd uh more or less i have not put the data in the recent past because it's almost same you know currently it's fluctuating around 65 to 70 sometimes 60 to 74 depending upon the movement of traffic depending upon the lockdown restrictions you can see here 
even uh, 70 hyderabad is standing in during march 21st coming compared to delhi's 186 but immediately within 4 days there is a drastic reduction in delhi but not a significant reduction was observed in hyderabad uh, and you can see also here especially there are various regions i don't want to name them right now um i'll show you one website where you can all access the air pollution levels on a daily basis and hourly basis so the thing here is there was a monitoring station which was observed on 21st april that 19 part from 19 particles per billion to 5.9 particles per billion drop was observed this is exclusively during the lockdown time but that significant drop is not that high and there was an article which says that uh, it's a very important point which we have to observe and you know sometimes we might get this doubt you know okay there is not much pollution not much movement of traffic but still some places like hyderabad bangalore and some parts of the country are experiencing rains so that's where you know uh, especially in bihar and odisha also the main reason behind that especially during these lockdown times where the complete traffic has come to halt the cloud over parts i have underlined here the uh, one of the uh, meteorologist has said this uh, very recently that the cloud over parts of telangana and higher levels of uh, humidity may have resulted in local pollutants mixing with water vapor leading to current aqi levels so that there is a no drastic change because of the presence of humidity so he also said that there is a, a trough so trough and crust are some of the atmospheric trunks which we come across uh, when we talk about the rains um, so the trough extending from karnataka to telangana or like from bihar to south odisha that might lead to uh, the small rainfall happening low content rainfall happening and that might lead to light rain also that's what was observed uh, in telangana also in the last week so that is something which is uh interesting over there that was observed uh, with respect to air quality index so i took this from uh, one of the times of india article uh, moving forward so this is what i wanted to highlight most importantly during this lockdown so you can all see here that all four all majority of metropolitan cities were shown here uh, remember one thing here i am just trying to show cars only cities because i uh, believe in and united nations also says that Uh, urban population are are the major contributors to the pollution compared to the uh, semi urban or rural population so you can see here uh, delhi uh, starting from delhi to hyderabad uh, it's clearly observed that the hyderabad reduction is comparatively less compared to all other cities even chennai's contribution is also very less but its aqi is a uh, bit low compared to hyderabad on march 30 um uh, last year so an yearly comparison was made and see this year in march 30 2020 we were already in lockdown and the same is experienced in terms of air quality index also so when you are talking about these numbers we also need to know what does this number represents so to start from uh, it's good uh, when we rate it as 0 to 50 and moderate poor unhealthy severe and hazardous so these are the six categories classified by air quality index and uh, central pollution control board i guess and i hope you all might be remembering about the condition of delhi actually i thought of putting some of the images of india gate charminar and some of the places in jaipur and all uh, uh, before and after lockdown but you know you might have already been observed those things in the internet and you could see um, some places where especially in delhi parts of the country uh, it, it's very difficult even to see the sky in the early morning around even at 7 o'clock 8 o'clock entire sky is completely covered by the fog or smog i would rather say because of the smoke generated due to pollution but now you can see the drastic change here from 226 to 62 as i said again you know delhi government has tried a lot of ways like even odd rule and a lot of pollution measures and and every time this i mean sometimes it also crossed 300 which is a severe threat to the um, an individual human being so uh, this website i just wanted to i wanted to, this this presentation will be shared with all of you and in order to look into hourly basis air quality index in the place where you are living in you can click this link at any point of time and get the uh, live data of air quality on the atmosphere on a place wherever you are living 
Now, next important thing during lockdown that was observed across the globe, especially by NASA, is the aerosol level. So aerosol level, so aerosol is just nothing. It's a small combination of solid and liquid particles. Those are suspended in the atmosphere. So when we talk about this, there are various reasons which I have highlighted here. Wind blown dust, sea salt, smoke from wildfires, pollution, a lot of things. Now, depending upon the size, as I said, the particle size can be as small as 2.5 micron. Even we don't know whether we are inhaling it. And if we inhale, that will lead to a lot of asthma problems that a lot of people would experience. So now, if you see the drastical change in the aerosol optical depth, especially in the northern India. So NASA has clearly observed the effect of lockdown on the overall pollution of the aerosol with respect to aerosol in the northern part of the country. And see here, from 2016 to 19, if you take average, this is it's around 0.6 to 0.7 between that, or 0.6, close to 0.6. But now if you see in 2020, beyond April, this, is, this has drastically come down to 0.2. And this is exclusively, I'll show a map again. So this is the map which shows the uh, aerosol change, uh, levels of aerosol change with respect to every year, so 2016, 17, 18, 19, and see the 20 part. And and in April, this, this data is still uh, March, but April, you know, it's even more further reduced because of our extended lockdown scenario. So NASA satellites have detected the lowest aerosol levels in 20 years over northern India. That's one of the major improvement in our atmospheric conditions uh, in the recent past. So I'll just quickly rush up through uh, this specific part here, a small animation of how exactly the global scenario of aerosol things with respect to solid particles and liquid particles together are contributing to various uh, parts of the world uh, starting from 2000 in the last 20 years. So I'll just completely drag on till the end to make you understand the, the current scenario in 2020. So you can see here, uh, again, I'm sorry. So this is the current scenario right now where March 2020 is completely less compared to the previous years. So here uh, the palest yellow represents the thickness of less than 0.1, which is crystal clear sky with a maximum visibility. But if value of one represents reddish brown, so uh, that's huge, hazy conditions wherein you cannot even see the clear sky visible to you. That's That's something which is not acceptable uh, in terms of atmospheric conditions. So with that basic, you know, as I said, this is a, a whole lot of a topic and it requires a lot of, you know, efforts or a lot of time to explain individual level because we have air pollution, water pollution, pollution from waste, pollution from uh, different parameters. So it, it's a whole lot of a topic, but I wanted to highlight uh, in this presentation on certain things which world is observing in India what world is observing, especially AQI and aerosol index. So moving on to solid waste management, uh, which we all know um, uh, this is an interesting fact. India generates on an average 150,000 tons of waste daily and 62 million tons annually. Um, and this is as per the World Bank and Asian Development Bank records. And we have 70 to 80 percent of those waste gets collected only 70 to 80 percent. OK, after collecting. How much is being processed? 25. And the remaining 75% of the waste uh, is not being processed at all. So we are all under a serious threat. So this, this has become one of the major challenge and one of the uh, most important uh, parameters in terms of research contributions in the same field. Uh, moving ahead, so this is again, you know, the top 10 states and the bottom 10 states uh, this is a recent statistic which I've got it from uh, one of the Delhi-based centers for science and environment. Uh, you can see the top 10 states and the bottom 10 states. Arunachal Pradesh stands top with least thing of waste processed is 0%. And uh, in the top 10 states, you can see there uh, the Chhattisgarh, Telangana. You can see Delhi here. 10,500 metric tons of waste being generated on a daily basis, which is huge. You know, that's, that's something which is... Uh, which has to be addressed at, at some level. And now, uh, thanks to Swachh Bharat Abhiyan and we have different schemes of Government of India, uh, Clean India, Green India campaign, Clean India campaign, Swachh Bharat Abhiyan, 
Unnat Bharat Abhiyan to take care of villages. So a lot of lot of schemes have come in, and it is our individual responsibility even during these times. Uh, because you know, I personally experienced the same thing in in the place where I am staying. That we were we were given a strict norms to ensure that our waste is disposed properly. Because these things should not again lead to atmospheric problems and again the spread of this virus. So these are some of the various color representation of what waste has to be dumped into what. And then, uh, as I said, you know, the top five cities in India which generate highest municipal waste, in which Delhi stands first and. Uh, the Kolkata stands at the end. Uh, so that that's one of the statistics which we got from the central government agency. So this is such a good scheme, uh, Swachh Bharat Abhiyan. Even I was reading one article the other day that the the total contribution of the Swachh Bharat Abhiyan scheme uh, is less compared to the current lockdown uh, reduction in the waste management. Uh, so the statistic says that during the lockdown uh, period till April 28th. Uh, there is a 25 percent reduction of generating the municipal waste across the nation. 25 percent. That's a big number. And we were talking about 150,000 per day. And if you remove 25 percent from that, it's such a it's a huge number. Uh, but you know that's not permanent because once if you come out of the situation again, the routine starts, and then we'll again uh, try to uh, no. But but it is our responsibility to try to maintain at least eight to 10 percent there reduction. So this I took it from one of the Bangalore, uh, Bangalore state government uh, uh, representative that they are trying to say how do we need to uh, dump or dispose the waste and how it ha exactly has to be collected and then processed. See here, this topic right now plays a very crucial role for COVID-19. You know, they, there are cases where, you know, in, in different parts of the world, especially in, in Italy, Spain, of course, they are related to biomedical waste, but sometimes, you know, the, the solid waste and biomedical waste, if they are combined together, especially during this COVID-19, you know, it's very, very difficult to come out of such situation. And that's a challenging thing to all of us. So it, it's an individual responsibility to ensure that because of these normal day-to-day -day routines, we should not uh, be a part of uh, contributing to increase in COVID-19 spread. So we should be very careful in our daily routines too. Uh, as I said, this is one of the statistics which I took from uh, Central Pollution uh, Control Board of India. 25%, it's a huge reduction. And coming to the last one, the biomedical waste. Uh, we all know that you know current scenario demands this a lot. And uh, it's very important for, for the, the medi medical practitioners, doctors, nurses, all medical representatives, to follow a segregation process of various biomedical waste, um, which I, I just tried to, you know, bifurcate in terms of different colors and what has to be used and all. Otherwise, this biomedical waste, uh, one of the IAS officer representing government of India, couple of days back, is trying to say that if at all, if this biomedical waste is not managed properly during this COVID-19 phase, it will increase by an amount of 10 tons uh, on a daily basis, uh, sorry, uh, overall uh, basis, and 10 ton increase will always be a danger, especially whenever we are associated with su such pandemic um, dangerous coronavirus. So now uh, coming to this, this is what Indian uh, scenario is trying to look into, uh, how to uh, use each and every dustbin and for what type of thing. So see this image, you can see it's like, drastic you know and, and this will definitely lead to a drastic change in the overall perception of what we think and what we do also see the amount of biomedical waste that is being generated right now i think you might also everyone uh, here might have heard about the condition of uh, various countries across the globe that they are not even finding a place to accommodate patients especially of age above 60 and all so it's such a pathetic situation so we have waste on one side we have patients waiting outside so we all should pray to God that, you know, we shouldn't uh, be in such situation. And then uh, we have this uh, recent article on April 19th of various tools and uh, techniques and guidelines were given by the Central Pollution Control Board uh, for disposal of biomedical waste um, on April 19th. Uh, I'll, I'll share the document. You can find it online also, uh, the same document where a proper step-by-step uh, -step process of each and everything was given, especially during this uh, COVID-19 uh, uh, 
condition so and then i i i I'll, I'll finish off with my last part of this presentation uh, which is more uh, close to um, the part of how to overcome all these things so it's not a single man job uh, it's not a A, a, a couple of families job or a, a community job or a state job it's a collective job so as a, as a family uh, we need individual families we need to ensure that the pollution levels or the waste that are being generated should not affect uh, have the adverse effects on the society and then again coming to the the local bodies also have to take a lot of responsibilities in terms of addressing uh, these activities uh, reduction of these activities some such techniques are especially when we are talking about the air pollution uh, the most important parameter is the traffic uh, the pollution coming from traffic uh, because of that there are so many techniques like what delhi has implemented to some extent it it worked uh, even not policy and we have uh, consumer pricing and we have uh, uh, electric vehicles of course some at least some waste can be reduced and there is something called fast bicycle system uh these all belong to the traffic and transportation part and and the consumer pricing actually uh, is a very good idea that that one of my uh, friend who is working on it right now that uh, a, a consumer who is using the the, the roads uh, for their travel will be charged on a monthly basis depending upon the amount of distance that is trying to travel on a given day and how much amount of emissions are coming out of his vehicle something like that so and and again um so as we all know that the public mode of transport personal level uh, we have our own transport and all so every individual uh, parameter will have its own uh, representation there so to end this i I'll, i'll just conclude with the last part of my presentation that uh, life cycle assessment uh, which you always you know it's one of my favorite fields and Uh, one of the very important aspect in almost excuse all me, sir. yeah yeah excuse me sir sir yes, yes. Uh, finish your talk in uh, within 5 minutes sir no that's what yeah yes, this sir, is my last time is running sir yeah this okay, is my last okay. part okay okay thank you sir thank you sir. Yes. yeah so when we are talking about the life cycle assessment we need to systematically an- analyze analyze the uh, environment impact of the products that can be any product uh you can see here uh, any product will have extraction processing design manufacture and waste and especially the important parameter comes in terms of uh, the dumping disposal part so this thing we need to be very much careful and different resources one of the talk in this uh, summit is about renewable energy and so is a previous talks also have shown very good uh, uh, representation of how to overcome such situations in this is a basic understanding of Uh, how the life cycle assessment has come into picture it all started from coca cola and then it went to all our daily consumer products believe me or not um whatever the product that we are using in our day to day routine life has some impact to atmosphere i mean as i said it's a vast topic um we can speak at another uh, platform or forum so every individual product that we are using will contribute to the atmosphere and especially in this specific part of covid 19 um it plays a crucial role and and i wanted to end this talk saying that uh, we can't be happy uh, thinking that you know the climate change and environment are showing a positive impact okay that's fine we are on safe side definitely not because as i said once the things get normal within some time maybe 6 months or 1 year or 2 years the amount of emissions will be doubled or even tripled also because they were not functioning for quite some time and that would definitely have an adverse impact on the society so it's it's a, it's an individual responsibility of all of us to ensure that these things are not uh, taken forward uh, sorry these things are taken forward in terms of controlling the uh, atmospheric uh, emission of gases from our our individual perception thank you okay uh, thank you uh, for your uh, wonderful speech and there is a question from dk pande okay and the question is uh, still the challenge is to educate populations about yes. populations why policies for awareness and self dis- discipline could not be successful what are the measures being taken towards this direction yeah that's a very good question sir um mm-hmm. uh, I, so the thing is actually sir uh, policies for awareness and self discipline 
Yes. So uh, the question itself has an answer: awareness and self-discipline. So, for example, yeah. uh, we need to create that. There are a lot of awareness campaigns across the nation in India, especially. You believe me or not? There are so many courses running on creating the awareness of and educating the population to ensure that they will not be personally responsible. The measures being taken towards this direction are again the answer would again point out to awareness. At the same time, as I said. Mm-hmm. uh being a social responsible persons in the country it is our responsibility to take a call if my job place is 5 kilometers away from my house do i need to take a bike or do i need to go with the public transport i'm just giving a small example if i take a bike 20 bikes can come if i go by a car then you know the thing is uh, sorry if i go by public transport then 40 of us can go so these things yes. play a crucial role next step yeah sir i have a question uh, yeah please will uh, will corona virus mark a turning point in how the public uh, think about the climate change definitely sir this is a definite thing and uh, yesterday i was reading one of the article from united nations it clearly states that this corona virus especially in developing country like india um, it has got lot of drastic change having said that we should not multiple our emissions once the situations get normal if we multiply yes. and if you if you if our emissions are multiplied again you know we are helpless because uh, if we play with the nature we are seeing what's what's happening right now yes 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 okay yeah. thank you once again sir thank and, you uh, i conclude the session and uh, i request to the swetha ma'am to take over the floor and continue ma'am swetha ma'am Yes, Are sir. you getting my voice? Yes, yes. Yes, yes. I can hear you. I can hear you. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Pradeep. Thank you so much, and thank you, Dr. Kalyan. That was a very, very impressive presentation and a very uh, broader kind of uh, overview on how climate change has been impacted. touching various segments of civil engineering i'm sure uh, many of us like i personally also liked it a lot uh, thank, thank you. you very much for your i would also like to personally thank dr swetha in this regard because you know i have been in touch with her almost every day uh, regarding these things and i would personally congratulate her for organizing such a huge event especially uh, in this pandemic situation bringing all of us together uh, and engaging all of us to understand what's happening across the globe thank you very much thank you thank you so much it was a team effort i really congratulate my team for bringing everybody together and cooperating in such a good way and uh, thank you dr kalyan will certainly collaborate much more and do much more good work together also professionally uh, thank you for your time and uh, i would uh, inform the audience that we will be taking a 10 minute break and then we have another two sessions coming up and then we will be concluding the summit uh, so we will take a 10 minute break and we will join back exactly at 45